Last weekend, I went to the first official bus fair down in Oregon, where I met a ton of amazing people and so many incredible schoolies. In this week's video, I'm featuring one couple, their adorable schoolie, and the story of how bus life has changed their lives. Make this house our tiny I'm Tyler. I'm Lexi. And our bus is One Wild Ride. We decided to build a bus because we were paying outrageous amounts of rent in Southern California. I think we both never really saw a lot of this country or most countries but definitely a lot of our own country and wanted to get out and explore while we were still young enough to want to do it I guess. Tyler actually found this whole community of people that had renovated old school buses and turned them into homes and we kind of got obsessed. We were both bartending in LA. We lived in a one bedroom apartment that had one window and probably the same size as our bus and we were paying $18.50 a month. <laughs> we were just spending our money in LA. Like we weren't able to save. You constantly so get cash, but then at the same time you're constantly spend spending it. it in LA. So we've actually saved more money doing this lifestyle. We bought our bus for 10,000, which is a lot. You can get them for a lot cheaper. Um, but our bus was already painted gray. He had it registered as an RV. Did a lot of engine work, but it was, it was still a school bus inside, so we had to do all the demo and stuff. And then we put about 15 into it. So we're about 25 to 30,000 now with some of the repairs we've had to do on the engine. So we sold everything and we kind of budgeted out a year. Mm -hmm and um, we've gone over that. So now we've done little things here and there, like odd jobs on Craigslist, like Tyler's done flooring. Mm -hmm. um, he recently like repainted a deck or something. Yeah, and, like random stuff. Yeah, the community of just tiny homes in general, like or nomads on the road, like is so amazing. You really connect with everyone and get to hear other people's stories. This festival that we're at now, it's like you meet so many other people that are going through the same exact thing and they, just wanted to get out of their dead-end job or corporate America or whatever and go out and actually see some stuff. So um, it's really cool to meet all the like-minded bus lifers. Welcome to the inside of One Wild Ride. We have a seven-foot couch, custom couch cushions. The colors were not really picked by me, I guess it was more like mo mostly Lexi. We both agreed on burnt orange and didn't want it like too girly, but also wanted a lot of bright colors. So burnt orange was kind of like the perfect compromise, I think. The outside being gray and dull, like looking like a prison bus, it kind of like brightens it up in here. You can move the pillows if someone did want to sleep on it, because we didn't do a, like a guest bed or a pull-out couch or anything like that, but it's pretty much twin size. It's not the best to sleep on, but um, we don't really have guests over ever, so. <laughs> we have storage underneath. A lot of people do the layout like dinette, then couch, then some other seating. I mean, we don't host that often, but when we do have people in here, it's kind of like a cool little gathering area. So we have batteries under there. And then this side has our inverter. Flooring, we did Home Depot laminate. It was, I think, 72 cents a square foot or something. We bought a bunch of boxes and ended up using a lot of it for trim. So in places like this, and eventually in the bedroom, you'll see the whole back wall is all flooring also. It's a handicap bus, so it's a little bit taller, so we didn't need to do a roof raise. We're both pretty tall. I'm 6'2", she's 5'11", and I still fit. Into our kitchen, we went really deep and wide with the counters. We got all this old bamboo. A buddy of ours found it for 80 bucks or something from an old job site. We did pretty good sized sink from Ikea. It was on the cheap side. We have regular RV oven. This is all propane. We keep 
a 20 gallon tank for this and then another 20 gallon tank for a hot water heater. We do 50 gallons of fresh water under the bed and then a 45 gallon gray water tank under the bus. So 50 gallons for us will last like quite a bit because we try not to take too many showers in here either. <laughs> All of our kitchen storage is just these cabinets. Like we didn't build shelves either. <laughs> Um, over on the other side, we have our trash, uh, hot water heater, all the plumbing, that kind of stuff. We found these in the trash, I think. Um, they were like dirty brown with rusty gold knobs and we just sanded them, painted them and bought new knobs and they were super good. For the skylight, we actually only have one, which is really rare also, we found, because we've been in a bunch of friends' buses now and they have at least two. But yeah, we left this. It's super cool to get like good airflow in. We'll put this side down uh, and it kind of scoops in air while we're driving. All right, guys, I'm going to show you the back of the bus. Um, back here we have our shower. I really wanted a wood shower. I know that sounds crazy. A lot of people ask us if it's going to get moldy, but We've been in the bus for a year and a half and it's been fine. We just did Thompson's water seal on it. We barely shower in the bus, so like a lot of times we'll stop at like truck stops because water's limited. We ended up going with a Lowe's uh, accordion door and we ended up cutting them to size. So we just cut the bottom off and they just closed like that. And we put a shower curtain too to help with water. And then we just have bungees to hook them in place. And then for the bathroom, we actually, these ones, go together with magnets for privacy. So, oops, with the rug in the place. So they'll just close like that. They work really well and they're very light. So we do have a nature's head, which we love. Um, we haven't had any issues with it in the year and a half we've been using it. So um, highly recommend that. I think one thing we really wanted to do was connect the liquids to our gray water tank. So that might be in our future sometime, but yeah, so far really good. I just have this little mirror and I sit up front and get ready that way. Before we started bus life, I was very high maintenance, I think. Living in LA, <laughs> always getting my nails done, my hair done. Being conservative on water um, was hard to get used to and especially like the compost toilet, I was a little freaked out about in the beginning, mm -hmm. but now I feel like I'm more relaxed and this lifestyle has taught me to really just enjoy and be in the moment. Definitely right? in the moment, and yeah. Like, just live like life and not have to worry about like the superficial things. <laughs> the bus life is just way better. I don't even know how to like describe it. It's just, yeah, it's, I don't ever want to be like stationary in one spot I feel like anymore. It's if you could do this and make something that seems like your house and not feel like you're on vacation, but still kind of feel like you're on vacation all the time, it's like the perfect balance. We have an apartment sized fridge. Um, it's an energy star. We got it off Amazon. I believe it was like 300 bucks and we use this to close it. It's a baby lock. So when we're driving, it won't open. So that's the one thing that we're drawing power all the time. I think it's like 68 Watts. So, um, eventually we'll want to get some more batteries to run it. Cause sometimes we do get low from the fridge. And then back here, I insisted on having a closet. It's mostly my clothes, um, but yeah, so we did a full closet almost, and I got this hanging thing from Ikea to store more clothes. <laughs> I think I have about like four pairs of shoes. I feel like Tyler might have more than me now, um, but yeah, I did have to downsize a lot, but I also brought a lot of clothes too. So these are Will Wells right here and at first we didn't know what to do with them. We were kind of stuck on that and um, we decided one, let's do the closet for sure. And then after getting the nature's head and placing it around, we thought it was the perfect place for the toilet on the other side. So we got an RV rooftop AC draws a lot of power. We can't even run it with our generator, so we have to be plugged into shore power. So we have 30 amp outside, so if we're wanting to run the AC, if it's really hot, we have to go to an RV park or a state park to plug in. We have our cat Ruka. She's actually adjusted to bus life really well. 
The first day she got really car sick and was like drooling and throwing up everywhere. And I was like, I don't know if she's gonna be able to make this lifestyle work. The next day she was totally fine roaming around the bus while we were driving. And now she's, we're kind of letting her outside and she's loving it. She always comes back to the bus and she's a full wild bus cat now. <laughs> We don't have much lighting in the bus, so we kept our original lights, um, our original bus lights. And then back here, we just have Christmas lights for at night, which makes the ambiance look a lot better, I think. And then we also have a 32 inch TV back here and Tyler's PlayStation he brought, so. We actually left everything up here original except for putting in the new switches and a backup camera. Original seat, super uncomfortable, but it's cool. Uh, I don't have an armrest, which is also kind of annoying. That's kind of one thing I wanted to leave, like OG bus related up here, was just keep it all open. And I know a lot of people do the, um, like an RV door, or actually like a house door. Uh, but the whole fun part for me in getting a bus was like the handle and the windows. And that's why we didn't do like the rays. And so we wanted it to look super authentic, especially from the front and from outside. Our cat box goes up here when we uh, are parked. Normally it'll sit in the shower when we're driving so that it doesn't move all around, but uh, we try to get it as far away from the bed area as possible when we're actually like stationary for a bit. Well, the bus is a 34 foot international. It's a DT466E motor. It's top speed is like 60 so it's pretty slow and actually we got that adjusted up like we took it to a place that they plugged into the computer and bumped the governor up to 60 but we were doing 52 for the first like seven months of our journey i do pretty much 99 percent of the driving um lexi's driven it a couple times but it's definitely scary when you're not used to driving something that's 34 feet long So this is our custom motorcycle rack. We were gonna do a motorcycle in the bus on the side door, but it just didn't work out with space. So uh, I had a friend build this for us. I and mean, then we have a garage back here. This is what's behind our bed. So have a generator, uh, extra water for if we're really going out for a long time. Um, I'll fill up, that's another 12 gallons I could dump into the bus. And then have a bike, our hose. Handicap door, now that we didn't use this whole part as a garage for the motorcycle, we ended up uh, loving that we didn't do that because we have pretty much like an awesome bedroom door now. So whenever we're parked somewhere cool, we can open it up and get a cool view from bed. Now it's like our favorite part. I couldn't imagine not having the bedroom door because every time we're on like a cool beach or especially when we did all of Baja, like pulling up right next to the beach and opening that was like super awesome. After a year and a half, we still love the bus life. I think we can do smaller, like eventually we'll probably do something smaller. I think once you do the lifestyle for a few months, you realize that you really don't need a lot. Yeah. And it's just super refreshing to downsize it and is. purge all of your old <laughs> clothes and things. We don't have anything back home except for family, so yeah. everything's just, it's all on the table for the bus life, I think. Mm -hmm.